dogs, wedding planning, and a little bit of puck prep, we've got it all covered with our favorite former Minnesota Wild player turned Boston Bruin, Charlie Coyle. Plus, Kirsten Kroll helps break down some free agency signings and much more. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Better Edge, Royal Credit Union, and Peak Vestibular Center. This is Season 3, Episode 136. Calling all buttes. The Beauty League has begun its weekly games at Braemar Ice Arena in Edina, and Soda Stick wants to make sure you're geared up. As the exclusive to Beauty League merchandiser, Soda Stick will have you covered with hats, tees, and much more each week at DBL and online at sodastick.com. Don't forget code Bardown Beauties for 15% off all your purchases. Hello, everybody. What's up? We're back. Bard on Beauties, episode 136. And boy, oh boy, do we got a good one for you. Charlie Coyle makes his second return. Uh, such an awesome dude. You all know it. You all miss him. You all love him. We are in that boat. Joining me this week, too, Kirsten Krull. Da, 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 da. Anybody who follows hockey knows Kirsten. And if you don't, you're lagging behind. Get with it. Kirsten, what's going on? How are you? You know, Jesse, things have been pretty crazy in my life. I mean, getting ready for the hockey season all over again and with my full-time job, junior hockey reporter, that hasn't stopped, but add in yes. uh, moving to the cities. So an hour and a half from where I'm currently at and whoop, whoop. everything else, there's a lot going on. I got to see your beautiful face for the first time about a week ago yes. at Beauty League. So I mean, yes. what more could you ask for? I mean, Beauty League's just the best. You can come catch Kirsten there. You see her probably all up in your social media. If you're following Beauty League stuff, we have a pretty good time out there. You know, that's not too bad. When we're Most, actually working. We, when we're we have actually a working. Lot of fun. <laughs> yes, mostly just preparing ourselves for our Instagram posts. So any of the photos you see of me, Kirsten took and, you know, usually vice versa. So we're crushing Except it. for the bad photos that yes. I have taken. I didn't actually take those. I, I should, mean, I need to find date uh, my George Kittle is not a big deal at all. It's fine to not see my face, Kirsten. Whatever. I, I was so overwhelmed in that moment. There was like <laughs> 10 kids right in front of me. <laughs> And I was getting yelled at at the same time. I know so I, was I was pushing like, the I need kids to away. do this for Jesse. I promised her this one thing. I had one job. We made it work. It's fine. I wrote the story. I talked to him. I was there. It's all good. You were. Uh, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about free agency, Kirsten. I know you're following the NHL as much as I do, um, which in the summer admittedly probably isn't nearly as much as I should, but there've been some big free agent signings. Uh, Johnny Gaudreau, Matthew Kachuk. Uh, Darcy Kemper to Washington. Any of these surprising you or any other ones that I'm missing that you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize so-and-so went here. Like anything that you think is really going to impact a team wholly? Um, you know, not really surprised by the ones that have been mentioned, but just kind of throwing a curveball here. The team that I think has won free agency that's really getting ready to make a big push this upcoming season. I think the Nashville Predators, and I feel like people shouldn't Ooh. be sleeping on them. Look what they've done. I mean, they re-signed Philip Forsberg, which a lot of people were very skeptical on. Um, and they finally got that done recently. So that was a huge deal. They add into the mix Ryan McDonough from the Tampa Bay Lightning. And then now, if you look at it too, Nino Niederreiter, Nino Niederreiter. They just signed him too from Carolinas and they still have Roman Yossi. So, I mean, the predators, I say every team should be on the lookout for them this upcoming season. Cause they, their signings and everything they're making moves to win. That's a good point. I really like that, especially last year, because I felt like I definitely slept on them and they were supposed to be bad. If you looked at the national predators, at the beginning of the year last year, I was like, Eh, not worried about them. And they did really well, right? Like they actually mm -hmm. did really well. They had phenomenal goaltending, obviously. Roman Yossi, as you mentioned, is a huge part of that too. But yeah, I mean, I forgot that Ryan McDonough is going there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, having them in the same division as the wild too, not ideal, but mm -hmm. yeah. still, still going to be fun to watch. So I'm excited about that. I agree. I think, and you're right. I mean, with all those pieces that is better success than just, you know, Columbus getting Johnny Gaudreau or Florida getting Kachuk. I mean, Florida still has some pieces, but they, they traded away a lot to get Kachuk. And so it's like, I don't know how that's really going to work out for them. Do you think the Minnesota wild are done now? Bill Guerin, obviously pretty quiet since the big cam Talbot move, but that does give him a smidge more free space. Now I'm not saying they have a lot. There's not much money you can play with. And honestly, it'll behoove him just to hold on to that anyway, in case there are injuries, whatnot. But do you think Billy G is going to maybe consider any other little small, tiny signings? Or do you think we're done? This is the team we're rolling with into camp. I feel like this probably isn't the team we're rolling with into camp. I feel like he's got something up his sleeve, but I don't know what. And I think that's the thing 
with Bill Guerin. Does anyone know what he's up to? Like literally when the whole Cam Talbot thing went down, if I remember from listening to the press conferences, he said he just had a feeling in the middle of the night, it wasn't going to work out. And then off he went to Ottawa. So Mm -hmm. you, I feel like you just don't know what's going to happen until it happens. So my gut feeling, if that's what we're going with, I don't think the wild are going to stay super quiet. I feel like there's going to be at least one move that people probably won't see coming. Not saying that it's going to be a huge blockbuster deal, but there's going to be something that happens. Are you thinking, so you're not thinking like a Matt Dumba out? No, I don't think it's smaller. I'm thinking a lot smaller. Yes. As far as Dumba goes, what do you know? You're given a look like, you know, something Kirsten. And I feel like, you know, something, (laughs) I mean, I wish I knew something (laughs) Then I could have a shot at breaking some news, but I don't have, I have about as good of luck with that as you do. I know it's a nightmare. Don't ever do it. Don't ever do it. It's a nightmare. It it gives me anxiety. It (laughs) does. It it does. Like I, I sweat profusely already. And if I break news, it's just even more so. And then I, yeah, it's, it's awful. Just just get ready. Now that you're in the circle, you're going to be getting these random texts from Jesse like <laughs> five hours before something happens. And like, they're going to do this and then Ooh. nothing. And then yeah. Russo breaks it and then Jesse will do it. Yeah. Cause I won't do it. I refuse to break anything. Like I'm like, I know this is happening, but I just, I'm not going to say it. Cause I don't, I don't like that pressure. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not letting you down as a reporter, but Russo can break it. It's fine. That's his, that's a shtick. My shtick is being funny and we all have our things. We stay in our lanes and that's my lane that I've chosen and I don't want to move. <laughs> I love it. But I mean, you brought up, you brought up Matt Dumba and I don't know it. I, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people ask me too, just like my opinion on it. Like, Oh, like the wild should move him or do this. And I, I just don't see him going anywhere. Doesn't he have a no trade clause also in his contract to where it would make he it has incredibly to, difficult to even move him to begin with? I would imagine he's got a 10 team list. I, but I don't, I don't remember. I haven't looked at his contract. Cause I agree. I don't think that, I think that ship has sailed it's funny i was on um serious fm's nhl network and they asked that same question they were like you know it seems like his name is always floated around every single year and he yet here he remains i'm like exactly like there's a reason that they want to keep him clearly you know and granted you want the return and maybe the return value for him isn't what they want either so it's like well what do you do then um but again, you have to remember that you need that veteran presence and him and Jonas Brodin are a heck of a pair. So it's like, why split that up for kind of an unknown, um, especially when you still probably can't afford what you need to get back. So it's, you know, I don't think Dumba is going anywhere. I think you guys will see him the rest of the year, unless he completely sucks at the first half. And then maybe they're like, oh, we're done with this experiment, but I don't know. They've held on to him this long, but also going yes. off of that too. I think wild fans are still very hung up on, slash disappointed once again with the wilds exit from the postseason, <laughs> and it's still fresh in their mind because I mean obviously we haven't played any wild hockey since then but also you need to keep in mind like sure you can be upset that you don't think Dumba performed to the level you expected but he also was battling through injuries like what was it a punctured lung broken rib yeah his shoulder is pectoral like for the past couple seasons he's oh I mean that's a high risk high reward player you know we've talked about it at length in previous episodes and even with Matt Dumba himself right I mean that's just the type of player he is you love him when he's hitting that clap bomb from inside the blue line but also with that there's a risk of a turnover and a goal the other way which we've also seen which i understand is the frustrating part but you can't have it both ways like you got it that's the type of player that he is and and there is value to that uh speaking of first round exits we will take a quick break when we come back charlie Coyle, who also had a first round exit he's never going to come back on after i said that it wasn't a dig charlie it's just the truth it was a segue (laughs) it was a segue um so we're gonna take a quick break when we come back charlie Coyle. Okay, I want you to think of the first time you took a big hit on the ice. Maybe it was a men's adult league. Maybe you were slammed into the boards in a big game. Or maybe it pulled a Jesse and just tripped over the blue line. Either way, it's happened. Boys hockey, girls hockey, it doesn't matter. We've all been there with our first big hits. And unfortunately, those hits can add up over time. Hockey players can end up with dizziness, headaches, and pain. And a large portion have even experienced concussion-like symptoms as a result. Thankfully, there's an answer. Dr. Tyler Stewart with Peak Vestibular Center specializes in the drug-free treatment of nagging concussion symptoms. Dr. Stewart formulated the 3A Brain Restoration Program, a comprehensive program to get to the root cause of your symptoms. He utilizes the latest technology and techniques to get you back on the path to your best life and back on the ice. 
If you're dealing with dizziness, headaches, or pain after taking one too many hits, contact Dr. Stewart for a complimentary consultation today. Go to dizzinesscare.com or call 715-690-2211 to schedule your complimentary consultation. We're back. Joining us now, everyone's favorite former Minnesota Wild player turned Boston Bruin, just all around great guy, Charlie Coyle. Charlie, what's going on, buddy? Not much. I appreciate you having me back on again for round two. How's it going? And you know, you were so good the first time. We just had it. How could we say oh, no, that? Oh, right? that was it, right? Yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. You just feel bad for me. Give another, another, uh, a crack at it exactly a little and you know we have to talk about your dedication to giving us the perfect shot for our youtube viewers i mean <clears throat> truly appreciate it buddy it's it's great yeah this is what you're working with so it's the best <laughs> we could do how are you how's summer how's the off season uh wedding planning right yeah yeah wedding planning for the last year we got engaged in august so that's been going on for a while and we're about three weeks out less than three weeks out now uh, so it's just getting more real and the last minute things and trying not to stress about it. And I'm not a stressful guy as it is, but <laughs> granted, I'm not doing most of the work either. She is. Are you in charge of anything? Uh, no. And I think that's, that's uh, <laughs> she did that on purpose. So, uh, but you know, just things with the groomsmen and my side of the family a little bit, like get things in order. I don't want our family to be a, you know, a crap show on the wedding day. Those are all perfect. So, <laughs> but no, we're knocking it out and it should be a lot of fun. Uh, but summer's flying by as it usually does. Like once July 4th hits and it just zooms by uh, a lot of weddings we've attended. So that's kind of taken up the weekends and sped this process up this whole summer. Uh, so it's almost time for ours. We got one more to go do and then it's our wedding and we'll hopefully enjoy it. Have you been taking notes at the weddings? Like, oh God, ours is going to be so much better than this. We're not going to have that. <laughs> like, you know, you do. Everybody mentally does. Yeah, you take, I never really, like, I think it's different now because, um, you know, it's your wedding. So now it's become more real. And then you start to think about that stuff but before when you're going to weddings, so you're just like, all right, let's like, when, when's dinner? When's, when's the bar open? When's <laughs> the fun stuff happening, right? And, and then I would talk to Danielle about it. Oh, didn't you love how they had the flowers like this? I was like, I didn't even know there was flowers. So you just don't pick <laughs> that stuff up. But now when you're getting, you know, your own wedding, you're now you're noticing that stuff. So I've been slowly doing that. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. How, you know, I, I always find it hilarious. How many NHL players have the same anniversaries and like the same, so, I mean, you guys have to almost, right? Like summer months are already huge wedding time months, but for you hockey players, it's like you have only a set amount of weekends that you really can can knock it out, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, this is only so much time. It's usually everyone does it in the summertime. Um, I think the NHL just posted a, uh, an Instagram of a few yeah. different people who got married or engaged. And so it seems like everyone does it like at one time, you know, you, you feel like you're the only one. It's your special time. But no, there's like a million other guys doing it right now. Um, I was like, I don't want to see that stuff on there. It's my time. Right. But yeah, everyone does it. It's just what we got to work with and try to cram it into the summer. And, and that was the other thing with like COVID and everyone's, you know, everyone else's weddings kind of pushed, you know, further down the road. And of course I proposed in like later August last year. So to have a wedding this summer, it was, it was tough to find space and, and a date, you know, cause everything was crammed up and not a lot left. So I didn't think too much uh, about that as I should have, um, but it's worked out. We got our date, we got our venue and, and, and hopefully it keeps going smooth. Yeah. I mean, you just got to say yes. And I do. And then I think you're, you're good. It, she yeah. has to actually say yes. And I do. That's even bigger. Yes. As well, that's, right? Yeah. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. And I'm, I think I can do that <laughs> part, but hopefully we get the right answer out of her. <laughs> have you, have you heard the rules of what it is to be the uh, husband at, at the wedding? Have you heard the rules? No, what is something it? goes wrong, right? There's like a tier of who gets to know. So first <laughs> you've got like the mom, then you've got the attendant. And if it can't get solved by them, then it goes to the groom. If it can't get solved by the groom, it never goes to the bride. <laughs> that's, I like it. that's the way I like it has it. to run. Happy wife, yeah. happy life, right? Yes. Yes. I'll remember that one. That's a good one. 
Are you guys I doing indoor? Like I'm the odd one out here. Never yeah. been married, but Fred <laughs> describing that makes perfect sense just from the weddings that I've gone to. Yeah. Jesse, not to cut you off here, but one question yeah. that I really want to know too. I mean, Charlie, I hope you pick up on this reference here, but just seeing the way you were kind of demonstrating, setting up the camera to get the right angle, Instagram husband, do you see that in your future getting the best shots for your fiance? No, you know what? I <laughs> I know everyone does it now. They do like the selfie shots and all that, but I'm like, I mean, may, maybe very rarely I'll just sit there and if she really wants a picture or something, but other than that, I'm like, what about me? Why don't you want a picture with me? <laughs> We're somewhere together. Why do you want one by yourself? You know? And I'm not saying she does that. Usually we do do that, but I, I don't know. Maybe I rubbed off on her a little bit, or maybe she already knew that. I don't know. But sometimes you see those people in the wild and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but I guess if she's sometimes she's with friends and all that, and I'm the photographer and I've learned a lot through the girls and, and how to take the proper shots and the angles and you to get the feet in there too. If they're wearing a dress and shoes, uh, I've come a long way. I have. I was going to say, you You're seem ready. like you've had practice to know the right <laughs> yeah. angle. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got my reps in, so I feel like I'm getting better. <laughs> hey, and I've seen your Instagram. You have quite a few photos of you and, and the dogs, which I think I'm sensing that there might be discrepancy there. I mean, is she your photographer for those or what? how are we working those out? Yeah, I think she was. I think she was. <laughs> we have we'd have, we have to do a lot for her. We have a um, uh, pucks and pups calendar for our team here. Yeah. And, uh, and so we had to get a few shots at one point and I think we we're kind of using it for that, but not all of them made the cut for the calendar. So then I used it for my own personal. And <laughs> so here I am, I guess I'm doing, no, I am my dogs. I guess I'm not doing the yeah. selfie by myself or I got the dog. That's so that's, true. that's a, that's a loophole. I use the dogs. <laughs> get a pass. <laughs> I think you told me when you were last in town that you miss the dogs a little bit more than Danielle only because they don't know that you're gone and you feel yes. bad. Right. Like, yeah. Tell me about your, your pups, you know, tell me yeah. about the, the puppy relationship. Oh, they're the best. I, <laughs> I, I literally love it. I've always been a dog person. Uh, we grew up with one, but we were always at school. My parents were always working. It wasn't fear that a dog. And then we never had one since it passed away years ago. And my parents never really want to get another one because they're always working and all that. Uh, it's, it's funny now. Well, it's great that I can be home and, and I have Danielle and whenever we're both away, my parents love watching them. Uh, my dad loves them more than like life itself. Like he just <laughs> tours them and it's awesome. And, uh, but I just, I love coming home and just, uh, I sit to Danielle all the time. We'll be out and about or something, go to the food store or have an appointment or something. And okay, we gotta get home. The dogs are waiting. We gotta go home. I can't wait to go play with the dogs and just play fetch and like, I just, I just love it. Like go to a park and just sit there. It's like a mental reset and you just, the dogs are having a blast and, uh, but you gotta get up a little earlier and I feel like having a kid, right? I mean, maybe, yeah. I don't know what that's like yet, but like you gotta get up earlier, take them out. We're still in a condo building. So you can't just open the door and let them out and yeah, all that. So there's some things with it, but it's so worth it. And we have two now, so they, they play well together and it's just fun to see them interact. I know. Have you gone full blown dog dad with it? Like, do you have the dog dad mug and like a dog dad shirt? I feel like you might. I I, I do, but I don't. I don't. Uh, no one else will see that. Uh, I don't wear the shirt outside. Uh, I keep my mug face in. No pictures. Uh, no, I feel like a big dog dad, but I don't have the uh, the extra stuff like that yet. But one day. <laughs> I love it. Well, I suppose we could talk a little hockey, you know, do you want to do that too? We could always touch base. Yes, How do sure. you, I you like know, hockey. well, I like <laughs> hockey. We like it. We love it here. In fact, um, you know, Charlie, how do you think the season went for you guys? My big question actually is, uh, can you imagine the Boston Bruins without a Patrice Bergeron? That situation still not settled. What has that like, uh, as a teammate, yeah. even as a lifelong Bruins who I'm sure watched even, you know, new Bergeron as a Bruin. Yeah, yeah. He's been here for, well, since he was 18 years old, what, almost mm -hmm. 20, 20 seasons ago, I think. He's going on his, he'd be going on his 20th, 19th, 20th, I think. Yeah. Somewhere around there, 18, 19, 20. But yeah, he's just, it's, he's a staple with the Bruins because the Bruins, you think of Patrice Bergeron. Um, so that would definitely be different uh, without him. And he's still such a great player on the South Bay last year. He's still, you know, doing so well for, a guy who's, you know, uh, getting older and uh, he can still play and, and get the job done. 
and be such a force for us. So we're, uh, we're, we're hoping he's coming back and hopefully the deal gets done and, uh, and, and, and that'll be huge for us. Uh, cause everyone can still use a guy like him on there. And, uh, he's just, just great for our team and, and the city in general, who's just such a great guy and everything he stands for and how he represents himself and, and the team is, is awesome. So we hope, we hope something gets done. Um, we'd all be pumped up. Uh, but as far as last year, uh, you know, we had, we had ups and downs like every team and, and, uh, heading into playoffs, we're feeling pretty good. And I think we thought that Carolina, we played Carolina first round, lost seven games. And it's, you know, you think, yeah, you lost in the first round and it's like, you weren't even close, but you, you really not. We thought, you know, that could have been, that could have been a harder series in the playoffs if we kept going, you know, they were, you forget Carolina you're Denver. talking to the Minnesota wild audience here, Charlie. So let's not talk about first round exits and feeling bad for ourselves. All right. All right. I had my fair share first round exits for the wild, unfortunately, but it doesn't always tell the story, right. You know, like we were, we were, you know, we went to seven games, you we went seven games, you never know. You could keep going. Right. But we didn't. And there's some things we got to look at and get better at. And we ran into a good team. Um, but it was fun to watch the wild and keep, keep tabs on them too. So they had, they had quite a team too. And yeah. Um, yeah. Things happen. And, but you learn from it, you get experience, you learn and, and you get better that next year. And that's kind of our mindset as well. Are you surprised that coach Cassidy lost a job? I don't want to say as a result of you guys getting bounced the first round, but I mean, I think that was a huge shock across the entire league and, you know, fans and media alike that he was kind of one of the coaches on the outs this year. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, he's had a, a pretty good record here as a head coach. Uh, and, and, but it is a business and, you know, it's not my call to, 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 to do that <laughs> stuff. And, it's always tough too. Cause the first thing you think about when that happens is, you know, he's got, he's got a couple of young kids and, and uh, you know, they go to school here. I'm sure they made friends, they play sports and they got to get up and move and go somewhere else. And, and luckily, you know, he, um, we all knew he'd get another job somewhere because he's a good coach. Um, so, you know, that's, that's good. But that's the first thing you think of the kids, their yeah. family and all that. Only people really think about that, but um yeah, things happen and, and you just kind of get a roll with it. And now we have a new coach in Jim Montgomery who I've heard really good things about. And he's kind of had success wherever he's been from the NHL ranks to college to uh, USHL. And we'll see what kind of system and, and new things he brings to our team and, and see how we adapt to that. Um, but it's always different when you get a new coach in there. You never really know how it's going to go and, and the um, – you know, the differences that he's going to bring and, uh, but we'll see what works and, and hopefully it does work right off the bat, but it'll be a little work in progress, but we're really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really good for our team. And uh, so, like I said, you just got to roll with what happens sometimes in the business side and, and make the most of it. And looking a little bit ahead now as well. I mean, this past season behind you, once you get to this point in the off season and you get ready for a fresh season, how antsy do you kind of get to, just kind of get another opportunity to go at it, make a run and get back out on the ice. Yeah. It's, 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 it's that's, yeah, that's, it's, that's like the good thing about summer and the, and the bad thing. Cause you want to keep going, especially when you don't win and you want to prove yourself again right away. It's like and during the season, when you have a bad game, you want to play that next night to, to, uh, to get back, you know, but summer's long. It's, you want to get back to playing and, but you also, you know, some guys are injured, surgeries, this and that. It's good to kind of rest when you can. And then you get back in the gym, you get back on the ice, you work on some things. And uh, and then you can't wait to to use it and showcase it to come back and play next season. Um, so that I've done a little bit of all that and this summer. And like you said, it's flying by and you think you have so much time, but you don't. Um, <clears throat> but you make the most of your time while you can in between weddings and wedding planning. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, just make the most of it. So I, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm sure every guy is doing the same thing and, and enjoying downtime, but putting in the work to make sure you're ready to go come next season and to be better for your team. And, uh, that's what they expect of me. So that's what I'm going to do. So So aside to just getting ready for the off season, wedding planning, being a dog dad, what else are you doing during this off season? Uh, there's not much to do besides that. That takes up my whole life. Um, I'm trying to think here. We uh, there's literally not much else to it. It's it's literally getting ready for weddings on the weekends that we're invited to, doing things during the week for our wedding. 
um, and then trying to occupy the dogs and uh, make sure they're not going crazy and uh, just trying to tucker them out. So that's literally my <laughs> life. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of other stuff I've been doing. I haven't like golfed. I haven't, I golfed one day yesterday at a charity event. That was it. Thinking about my dogs the whole time I was there. <laughs> Uh, but I haven't done much else. I swear <laughs> to God. Like I, I just, but you know, I'm okay with that. I love being yeah. a dog dad and doing all that stuff. And I'm very content with that life. So that's, that's how I'm living it. I'm telling you, you got to wear that shirt more often, man. Just wear it proud, <laughs> loud and proud dog. That's dad. why I'm only right here. This, this yeah. is the shirt. I just want to show the reality it. of it. <laughs> Um, going back to kind of Kirsten's point about taking time off and because I'm writing a story for USA Hockey Magazine. So this is a great segue for me um, and for kids in general. How important is it to take that break, especially when you're younger? And then even now as NHL players, for you guys to step away from the game, put the bag away and just kind of take a mental reset and a physical reset. Just how imperative is that to you as, as a player and as your development? It is a lot. And, you, and you, you start to realize it more and more when you get older. And you can't, you know, he's, I remember talking to older guys when I first entered the league and, you know, whether, you know, asking about their workout regimen and what they do. And it's like, I don't do a whole lot of weights anymore. I do this stuff because, you know, my, my joints and stuff and I can't handle it. I've had injuries and all that. So I got to kind of, and I do this, you know, so everyone's a little different, you know, health wise, but as you get older, it's tough to do everything you're doing when you're younger, but, um, as far as like kids, it's, I mean, I always took breaks too when I was younger. I love playing hockey. I always wanted to play. And I think back to now or, you know, to, or now when, you know, when I was younger and, and different tournaments coming up and I'd say to my dad, Oh, can we go to, can we play in that tournament? And him kind of be like, no, why don't we skip over that one? And I didn't understand it then. And you just want to play, play, play. Right. But right. I'm really glad we, he had a good head about that stuff. Um, because as a kid, you just want to go, go, go. And, and, play all the time but you need to reset you need to relax a little bit and, and play other sports go do something else go have fun be a kid um and then it kind of makes you more hungry more excited when it, it is time to come play hockey again um and so you start to notice it more as you get older and it starts to hit you you know like you want to you want to get in the gym as much as you can and skate as much as you can and get ready and work on things but um, sometimes you're better off just stepping away for a bit and, and, and sometimes that benefits you even more, um, mm -hmm. the rest, you know, and, and I've really learned that. Um, and it's, it, it's so true. And I think you see kids and, and even people our age, you know, who are still playing and they just kind of overdo it. And then come the season it's in, in playoffs there, they get nothing left to give and they're all burnt out, you know, mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's tough. It's a tough balance, but I think you learn as you go. And like I said, I'm lucky to have parents who were kind of, you know, they weren't forcing me to play every single day and every, you know, and it makes it more fun when it's kind of gradual like that. And you have that balance of that. And like I said, you get more excited to play and you get more to give once uh, that time comes. You said you golfed a little bit. Did you play any other sports when you were a kid? Did you play baseball? Do I remember we talked about baseball? No? Yeah, I played baseball. Yeah. I played like little league and, and okay. a little Babe Ruth and I played yeah. soccer and I played every other sport, you know, in the backyard. I had two older sisters who played, they played softball, basketball, uh, little hockey, soccer. So we were always kind of playing around. We had neighborhood kids who played football all the time in the backyard and have some good games. So we were always doing everything. Um, but I loved it. I loved it. I wish I played football at least a year to see how it was, but never got the chance. Uh and in lacrosse too, I had a, I had a, you know, a big family who a lot of them played lacrosse and I always wanted to, never got to, but we were playing every sport all the time. And, and, um, it was just so fun growing up in a neighborhood of kids doing that. Yeah. I played lacrosse. That's why I think I would do so well in Boston. Like I love the accent. Yeah. I love hockey. I love lacrosse. I'm like, that's my second, like one day, Charlie, one day I'll call you up. Yeah. Like, I'm in Boston just because I wanted to live here for a bit. <laughs> yeah. I'm in Boston, got my lacrosse stick. Where are we yeah. playing? <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what do you miss most about Minnesota though? There's gotta be a thing. Cause you guys are getting married back here, right? Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah. She's from there. And uh, so she persuaded me to bring my big family out there. Um, <laughs> no, I actually really didn't mind where um, easier for your family and uh, you know, she's, uh, mostly in charge of the day. So I figured yeah. <laughs> you get the reins, but, um, I don't know. It's hard to pinpoint one thing. I mean, I miss playing there, of course, but 
on the other hand, I'm at home now playing. So it's, I just feel very fortunate that I got to play in Minnesota state of hockey and then I get to play at home. Like it, it, not many people get to do that and play in two, you know, big markets like that where they love hockey and, uh, and, and you're playing in front of uh, some great fans. So I, I, I miss that. I just miss the people out there. There's, you think back to so many people. And then when I come out, uh, like, you know, with Danielle for a trip back to your family or a wedding or whatever it is. And you think to, Oh, you know, so many people that I could, you know, text right now and see that I, <laughs> you know, kind of got away from, but like they would drop anything just to go get a drink or go out to dinner, do something, just talk, chat. So it, you just miss the people and the relationships you, you kind of built when, when you were there. And uh, I guess now I'm thinking about it more and more is I miss the lake. I miss lake yeah, life. That's the best. Go. I think I'm a lake guy now and nice. I grew up on the ocean. <laughs> um, but too many great whites out here and, uh, I want to get away from them. It's shark week too. So it's perfect timing. Yeah, I think, right? It's actually, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's always sharks down Cape Cod here. No. You get the, you know, I think my sister has the tracker on her phone every, every day. She's, oh, new, new shark, new shark sighting. You know, you know? <laughs> so they're all over the place here and I want to get away from them and there's no sharks in the lake last time I checked. No. I got bit so, by a perch the other day, though. I mean, just like little nibbles. So that happens once in a while. Just more annoying than anything. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth being on the yeah, lake, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I miss that so much. Yeah, that's fair. You know, so when you were in Minnesota, one thing I also wanted to bring up, you had a lot of different hairstyles as a member of the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> what was your favorite style and how did you settle on? Like, I imagine this that you have right now is like an in-between, right? Because you had like the full shave, then you had the full fro. And now you're like kind of right in the middle. Yeah, there was no, there was no in between. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not a big style guy. And <laughs> I used to have like the Afro when I was younger. And then I, I'd, I'd kind of grow it out. And I remember I have, uh, there was a couple of years where I had a few guys in the wild. Uh, one being Jason Zucker. I think he got it going where guys would be like, Charlie, if you grow out your Afro to, you know, six inches long, we'll give you each like a thousand bucks, you know, like <laughs> we get this going, you give it a charity, whatever. And I was like thinking about it, but I'm like, my, I, I, my helmet wouldn't fit. I look like a bozo <laughs> and uh, it was tempting, but I never did it. But I, I did Aww. have like a little guy going because there's some picture where I see where I look back and I got kind of the girls, curls coming out, <laughs> but it's so hard to handle and maintain. And it just, Oh, it's all over the place. So that's why I started shaving it. Yeah. So it was either the Afro or I just completely shave it. Cause you wake up and you're just ready for the day. You don't have to shower. You don't have to do anything. What's right? the fiance's opinion? Uh, so brings me to my next point. So I met her yes. and uh, now I'm changing my hairstyle. And <laughs> I met, when I met her, I had, I had, a, I had the full shave going. So, mm -hmm. um, but then she's kind of like, Hey, you ever, you ever think about like, doing your hair a little differently i'm like well, yeah but I, I don't know how to do this i have curly hair what do you do with curly hair so i've been trying different things where it's it's kind of the in between but i still don't know exactly what i like and what looks good on me i so mean here if, i am going into the if you would have that? taken up zucker's fro offer you might not be getting married exactly <laughs> just saying I, i'm not the smartest guy but I'm, I'm not i'm not that stupid to fall in his trap i know how he works uh, but here I am going to my wedding and I don't know like what exactly style of hair I'm going to do here. So whatever happens, happens, hopefully it looks okay. And like curly hair, you gel it, you do whatever, like it never looks the exact same on any given day. It's always different. So you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> so hopefully they like it come wedding day, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. On the flip side though, post wedding, if you grew the hair back out, I feel like you would put up a strong argument to make those NHL style rankings if you follow them at all. Yeah. So, oh yeah. yeah. I, I think you'd have a, a good bet. <laughs> uh, yeah, you might be right. I don't, I don't think I have it in me to try that though. I'm not, like I said, I'm not a style guy, <laughs> um, but maybe, I don't know, maybe now if I ask Jason, maybe kind of ups the, uh, the, the money on that. Maybe, yeah. maybe you can get something going again. And, yeah. But, Good sort of rivalry because you know he loves his style, right? Like he's all oh, about it. Oh, so yeah. you guys could try it. You could you could easily combat that. You know, I think oh, that could be yeah. a fun, fun I little battle for a few years. I know, I know how he is. That's why I had to get rid of him. I had to get a girlfriend and a fiance. So I'm moving on. See him in the mirror for an hour every morning. 
Uh, I, speaking of clothes too, you actually have your own clothing line. Is that right? 3A gear? Yeah, kind of. So 3A okay. gear was, was, um, was something that these two, uh, or a couple of guys from, from my town of Weymouth, they started on their own, completely on their own. And, uh, these guys were, were athletes at my high school, a little older than me and they played football. So we always worked out together, um, you know, in the summers and one of the, um, strength coaches who I first started out with, he volunteered his time and, and for a number of years to, for all the athletes in, in my high school. And, and that's where I met this kid. And uh, he wanted to raise money for, for this guy as well in the gym that we started at. And, uh, and, and so he kind of asked me, he said, Hey, were we at this clothing line? We might, you know, we're thinking about doing a, uh, you know, a, a Charlie Coy one, if you're interested and in, in some of the proceeds and would, would go to, you know, the gym and, and, Paddle Tools, a strength coach. And so I was like, oh, I'm on board with that 100%. Yeah, sure. So they kind of came up with that logo and, and it was just kind of like a side thing. I thought it was going to be, you know, they just have it for, you know, the fall or wherever we started it, but they keep, they kept it going and it's been a few years now. Um, so it's been pretty good. They're awesome guys to work with. And, and so you see them popping up everywhere around town, uh, you know, in, in my town of Weymouth at different events and things like that. And, you see people wearing them and at the rink. And so it's been pretty cool, uh, yeah. but it, they're, they're nice to work with. And it's, it's done some good for, uh, for the gym and, and paddle tool. Who's our strength coach as well. Oh, nice. See, there you yeah. go. So you got some style. You must have a little, you know, something, <laughs> I guess. Like. That's a start. It's a start. We'll see where it takes me. It's a start. It's a start. Well, we've got, well, before we let you go, five random questions. Are you ready? Right. I'm ready. All right. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. Okay. What do you put on your hot dog? Uh, ketchup. That's it. That's really. Yeah, that's it. That's ketchup. interesting. Have you ever tried anything else? Absolutely not. <laughs> Hard no on that. <laughs> What's the deal? I don't know. I just, that's how I've always done it. Never straight away. I'm not a mustard guy. Um, relish pickles like no, that doesn't apply to me. So, yeah. uh, like the disgust to, on your face is just even better yeah, about it. Like I just uh, catch up all the way. Like you go to Fenway park, they get like the the big dogs there, or they have like sausage, you know, so sausage, you'll put on all the peppers and all that. That's fine. But hot dog, ketchup, bun, boom. We'll stick with the foods. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes or no? I, I think I tried that the other, or a few weeks back for the first time. And uh, it was okay, but I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys. It's like, it's like when you get ice cream or frozen yogurt and then you're like, Oh, I'm going to put fruit on it. No, yeah. you're, 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 First You're of all, fruit on ice cream that. is amazing, like, like, Charlie. This... <laughs> no, yeah. I love fruit ice cream. It's like my favorite. Yeah. Uh, all right, fine. What's where can you get the best slice in Boston? Oh god. Without trying to upset anybody, if you have sponsors or I don't know. <laughs> no, no, nothing. Um, I'm trying to think here. You know what? I'll just go with. There's a place I just drove by it actually. Uh, right before us, T. Anthony's. It's on the campus of Boston University where I went. And yeah. we used to have our like pregame meals there in college. And uh, they had to, we'd always have a slice of pizza too. So I'll say T. Anthony's. Um, teammate that you play like playing with cards with the least on the flights out, mm. whether it's because they take your money or mm. because they're bad, whatever it might be. Oh, I've actually never played cards on the plane before. What do you do? What? Yeah, never played cards. I don't sit at the wow. table, I don't do that. Uh, I either nap or sleep or I just I like to say I read but I I, I take a book but I don't always read it um, or I'll just watch a show or a movie or something all so right I all can't right. answer that question because I've never played cards that's well what's the show what what shows are we watching what's the latest show that you binge watched oh gosh we're kind of out of loop right now um I kind of like stopped ever since the season I'm trying to think of what I was watching um it's usually any Netflix, but you know what? There's been some comedy shows that I like. I've gone into like the comedy, the stand-up stuff, and Bill Burr has had some. Uh, I was gonna say, are you a Bill Burr fan? I love me some Bill Burr. Yeah, he's yeah, you awesome. have to be. Yeah, he just makes fun of everything and everyone, and it's <laughs> like an even playing field, and he's just so fun. I, so he just had a special come out that I that I was just watching. So nice. Oh yeah, what's that's on our date night list uh, on Friday? So that's a little yeah, fun. was it good? And, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I had some good laughs. But I think you will too. It's it's a good one. If anybody could play you in a movie, who would it be and why? Oh gosh, um, like a like a famous person. 
or like <laughs> do you want to play like, yourself or like what <laughs> <laughs> um no i mean i guess it could be whoever it doesn't like, have to make, be from boston you got plenty you can make to make jason from. zucker play you in a movie oh, just to no, really no, no, play. No, no, no. <laughs> i've been told that like some of the guys will call me ben affleck i've, I've had that before <laughs> i could and see he's, that yeah um i've also got told nick jonas when i have my afro so <laughs> I could see that i could see it <laughs> yeah i guess i guess one of those two guys maybe a mix of them both i like it what's your favorite ben affleck movie oh he's got a lot of good ones um the town's a really good one i love the yeah town. gotta be yeah. the town it's gotta be yeah. the town i mean goodwill yeah. hunting's pretty good too goodwill hunting yeah he's yeah. Got, some, he got some really good ones but it's all right well perfect well that's it see that was easy easy peasy Whew, off the hot seat thank god <laughs> well charlie thank you again so much for joining us so much fun to catch up with you i'm sure we'll uh see you in town this season but Good luck at the wedding. And I say good luck because I don't know what else you say. Like, congrats. Congratulations. Yeah, good I know. Luck. I can't, you can't uh, overdo it right now. No congrats yet. No <laughs> congrats <laughs> yet. Yeah. A couple I do's and we'll be we'll be having a good time. But no, I appreciate it. Thank you very yes. much. Uh, it'll be nice to get out to Minnesota again. Heck yeah. But, uh, are the dogs in the wedding? I didn't ask. Yeah. So yeah, we they actually are. Made, yeah, we're going to drive out with the dogs and uh, get them involved somehow. We're, we're, try- we're thinking about keeping them, but we're like, we're going to kick ourselves when we get our pictures back and all that and the dogs aren't there we'll feel bad so this, we're you mean you'll, gonna, this was you this was all the charlie coyle wedding planning he's like all right so the dogs are gonna do this that's right? the one thing i did i decided on i'm proud of it <laughs> yes bring some lip rollers and we'll be good are they gonna have little tuxedos or bow ties on <laughs> yeah we just ordered uh, a little something i think i think bodie the boys get you know a black little i don't know if the bow tie or ribbon and the girl little girl gracie she's got a little like Bo with the things off and Aww. she's got a white one. So I've got some matching uh, leashes. So we're doing it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they behave and we can. Hopefully uh, they don't them. steal the show. That's the big <laughs> yeah, thing, right? You probably know? will, but yeah. that's all right. They're my dogs. I love them and <laughs> they can do that. Only them, only them. Only them. Well, Charlie, you're yeah. the best. Thanks again. Yeah. Uh, and best of luck at the start of the season too. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. Good chat mm-hmm. with you. Good chat with you. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're back. Ah, Charlie, just such a good, good guy. Miss him. Miss him out here. So wonderful. Not more needs to be said about that. I don't think. Just I'll take a moment. Sorry. Let that, let that sit for a minute. Let that sit for a minute. No, he is. He's he's the best. I laugh that he, as well as every other NHL player I met when I had my first baby, still thinks that my little baby is my first baby, forgetting that no, they grow up and they uh they change. So <laughs> we'll see. He's gonna make a good dad someday. He'll move on from if he's this good of a dog dad, he's for sure gonna be a good dad. I was just gonna say, in the meantime, he's very focused on <laughs> his duties as dog dad. I, I'm excited to see pictures. You mentioned dogs and bow ties and little yes. dress suits. I'm excited to see the pictures. And if the NHL doesn't include that in whatever wedding post that they make about <laughs> it, I will be thoroughly disappointed. I completely agree. So again, thanks to Charlie. Thanks for sharing all your wedding details, dog details, hockey details, all of that. Also, thank you to Talk North for featuring us on their lovely network. Shout out to sodastick.com. Don't forget, you can get your Marcus Felino fan club shirts, uh, your applesauce, Zuki shirts, anything that you want. Also non-hockey as well, as always. The Beauty League, which Kirsten and I very involved with. They've got that gear as well at sodastick.com. Bar Down Beauties gets you 15% off all of your purchases. Also Better Edge, Better Edge, B-E-T-T-R Edge.com. You can place your hockey bets, football bets. You can't place hockey bets now, guys. I'm sorry. It's only football, baseball. Football's not even yet. Sports. Um, hashtag sports. That's better. Um, Royal credit union, less fee, more free shout out to Jim beam. Uh, and also shout out to peak vestibular center. That's it. We nailed it. Another episode. Well done, everybody. Kirsten, you're the best. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll definitely, uh, maybe make this a a regular thing, you know, it's, it will be great. Say less. Thank you for having me on fun as always. Anytime I get to see again, your beautiful face. It's a good day. Aww. I know. I'm excited for you to become a St. Paulite. That's or no. Oh, you're Egan, right? Yes. The suburb. Suburbia. So Suburbia. Yes. I'll need people to send me the tips, all the spots to go to because I'm a Southern Minnesota girl. I'm very already overwhelmed and lost at everything. Not an Egan. <laughs> I need to. <laughs> 
There's Fred, nothing in Egan, I can tell you that Fred, much. you can't say that. I'm already stressed about it. Fred, aren't you going to Egan? No, I'm going to Mendota. It's St. Paul. It's like the same. Close thing. enough. It's like no, the same close enough. difference. Yeah. You could loop sell St. Paul in there. They're all over there. About the same. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you to all of you for listening and tuning in. As always, don't forget to subscribe, rate, like, share. Uh, another great episode coming at you next week. But until then, have a good one.